Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Brone Does Things Halloween Spooky Spooktacular Theater 3000 with your host, Joel Servo Crow and Knuckles. Today we're going to be watching Manos, The Hands of Fate, only on Disney Channel. Alright, Doki Doki Literature Club. Not to be confused with Toki to Toki Doki Literature Club. Where if you don't go every day, you die. We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. Surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle repetitions and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monika gets her attention as usual. It's time to share poems again. I guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep. Even you sound more enthusiastic this time. Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? <laughs> Told you. Yeah, yeah. I returned to my seat and slipped the book into my bag. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. But now she must have read it more than once. <sighs> Is it that bad? No, no, it's not. It's good. It's really good, okay? There, I said it. Uh, this wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well... In that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Natsuki's face freezes like she just realized something. Y y you you're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then the poem slips out of, slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom. Red faced, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey Zen. Did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No, I just told her that- My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Mm -hmm. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean... Not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day, too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Zen? That depends. Does having three tiny versions of the club members telling me which words they approve of count as cheating? Because if so, then yeah, I'm cheating. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. You know, I did take a quick break between the two episodes. I need to go back to the charger. Alright, future me, I am back at the charger. I did take a quick break between episodes. I should have I should have gotten some water then. Oh well.
guess I'm just gonna have to have a sore throat tomorrow. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh. You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Eh? Yeah. But Zen wrote this poem, and we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Ugh. Atsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Zen is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you was- <laughs> Please stop that, Monica. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like- like what? Like that creepy pose you're making, please stop that. Uh, never mind. Ah, uh, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem. That's still not very fair to Sayori. She hasn't gotten to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Zen is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki returns my poem. It's not like she's gonna like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Are those recorders? <laughs> those are recorders. They put recorders in this game, oh my god. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her sing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Jesus Christ, that was surprisingly deep. Like, I did not expect this from a dating sim. I did not expect a metaphor like this from a dating sim. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course! It's about how everyone thinks my- That doesn't matter, it could be about anything! I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. I mean, I get that it's about manga, but... <sighs> wow. Still. Something that you're afraid of people found out. They'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid! I hit my water bottle. I do have a water bottle, it's just empty. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone, it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can, too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so... So consider yourself lucky, okay? Uh -huh. Well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest. I'm the element of honesty, Applejack. Jeez, just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? All right, I will. Who should I show my poem to next?
Oh my goodness! This is so good, Zen! Eh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem! Ugh... You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall, can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Zen poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes you feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <sighs> Why don't you at least try giving us some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. <sighs> All this talking is just exhausting. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you like singing something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow! Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Zen. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Whoa, that got dark real fast. It's a secret place where I keep all my... My glasses got caught up in my headphones. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle is starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave. Discovering secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty self could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in come my friends, and they come in such a hurry. Do they want at my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf when I'm yeah, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, a sh shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. S the fuck? Holy crap. Sayor, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. 
The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. Maybe it helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> I don't get ahead of yourself. So I always, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Gee, I wonder who I should show my poem to next. Um, are you still mad at me? Huh? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday? Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you... You prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. When I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monika wants, but it's not fair to you and you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri. Please. It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Yuri, come on. Come on. Yuri. 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 Stop. Stop. Yuri, please. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her. It's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. Sorry about myself. All I can do is accept that that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide to that request. Okay, everyone. We're all in each other's poems, right? The window. It was the sound of a crescendo, baby. It came from the There are bloodstains. Not the carpet. I don't remember the words to. Criminal. Been hit by. You've been struck by a smooth criminal. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Oh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? You won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to do for the event. Ah, uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing! Forming? Um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event, but the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's so putting it all in the poster in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Nice. So, Yori, I understand where you're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. I still have to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, 
finding new horizons, and having fun! That's right. It's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Doing all those voices just makes me feel like a friendless loser. Talking to my imaginary friends. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. That's no, Keaton. Yuri remains silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I, I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monika have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expecting faces. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Hey, better not be foreshadowing over there. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Uh, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? <sighs> oh no. Don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. When you can up to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. <clears throat> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, often voice fills the room. Her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monika finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monika takes breath and smiles. That was so good, Monika! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Wow, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the poem. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. <sighs> Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. Whoa. Sudden puberty. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering verbs. 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 Her quivering verbs transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman who don't need no man. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a where wait this must be a whale glimpse into the woeing file Yui keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back to reality. Whoop, there goes gravity, and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I'm the same situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward when we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. 
Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sire hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> sorry. It's a lot harder than I thought. I heard you guys do it so easily. Uh, I'm trying to think of it like you're assigning to other people. Imagine you're assigning it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels as if her soft voice is made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it comes from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like you get to read more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Zen liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Oh. I promise I will be better prepared for Monday's episode. I think my left leg just fell asleep. The next time I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenged you a little more. I think I really went to sleep. I think it just kind of went numb. Oh wow, this is weird. This is a weird feeling. I'm going back to the game now. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Zen. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Zen lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the poem. Podium. Damn it. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that I'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Up, oh, up, oh, blood's flowing back to my left leg. Blood is flowing back to my left leg. I am okay. Brone does things, is doing all right. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. <laughs> Anyway, the poem is called Jump. You know, like the manga magazine. Natsuki takes a break. Breath. So just... I am not doing very well reading-wise today. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. You know what, I'm gonna try something, hang on.
Okay. If my distance from the microphone was the problem, this should help keep everything sounding consistent. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back into her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well... Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I could put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. Wait, wrong voice. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. <laughs> it makes me really happy. You know what would make me really happy if you stopped doing that? Oh wow, now I can now I can see why this game was tagged with psychological horror. That is That is terrifying. Please stop doing that. Uh yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll, plan we'll, finish, we'll, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this, I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way to be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. <laughs> Still terrifying when you start out like that, Monica. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, then. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, uh... In... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? You do. What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... Walking home with Natsuki, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? Makes my... Kokoro go makes like Kokoro go Doki Doki Literature Club. I think I'd be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez, there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe, but I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know. Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone's different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Mm -hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. It was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Hell yeah, P poem time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. What's Monica so disappointed about? You'll have to find out on the next exciting episode of The Brone Does Things Spoopy Scary Skeleton Spooktacular Halloween Weekend Ween Weenus Week Weakness Ween Spooktacular Extreme I need some water also. So uh yeah. Goodbye for now. See y'all on Monday.